Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to do some basic bank switching. So if that's said, let's do this. So let's go over bank switching. And I'm still using the Nerdy Nice Mirror website, but now you're under the advanced tab. Here under lesson one, character bank switching is right over here. And I already covered bank switching on my Atari 2600 video, so if you already seen those videos, you have an idea what it does. But bank switching is pretty much you're going to swap or switch over here a bank, so it's a size of memory on the fly. So you're switching almost like if you think of the PlayStation 1 era, or you're playing like a game like Final Fantasy 7, at a certain point during the game, it's going to tell you to switch, swap the disk. So that's what's happening uh, here with this uh, the NES. So Pretty much the, like the Atari 2600, the NES. As time goes on, people figured out how to you. Once you make bigger games, and if you make bigger games, you're gonna need more memory. So that's it. one way, well, the main, one of the most popular ways to switch, uh, get more memory on our games. And as the tutorial implies, so as you completed a full game, you find the end ROM which it means no memory, if I go here under the colon, which, by the way, you can come here and download it right over here, character banks. Then null ROM over here, which would be a one, this would be a one instead of a three, but I'm gonna go over over there, it would be like this. It only has 16 kilobytes of program ROM and eight kilobytes of character ROM, so let me go back over here. So that's very limited, and to get more memory, you need to do our bank switching over here. So, oh, where is it? Back over here. Here it is. So, some to enable ROM, some cards from bank switching were used. And uh, is it manufacturer? We have these power packs over here, but I use the EverDriver, EverDrive to run on real time simulator, on real time, <laughs> real time server, on my any actual physical hardware, which is my actual NES. And uh, here, what is a character bank switching? So bank switching, extension one chunk of ROM to a different chunk, as I said before, but keeping everything within the same address range. Uh, this is not making a copy, but it's not making a copy, so it happens instantly. Yeah, it's not a copy, it's a different bank, so it does happen instantly. So you switch between bank whenever you want. Yeah, just give the command over here. And the size range depends on the mappers. And like I said before, mappers is like a firmware. It's a hardware that contains some software in it. And the C ROM over here is used to switch our character ROM from eight kilobytes over here. So there's eight kilobyte range from zero 000 to 115 and we are switching that between ROMs so you like like I said you're sweeping the PlayStation where just think of sw swapping all those CDs but all the CDs just contains in our case in our character banks just sprites so that's pretty much what we're doing over here and the where is it the C and ROM just just switch the character bank switch it doesn't have any programs uh, program bank switch, so it's still limited to this uh, normal size over here. Also, back over here. So here is going over the code set mapper. So here you're gonna go under our headers and change the mappers. So first is under mapper zero, which means no, and you can already have here a list of mappers to INS. And zero is the no ROM mapper, so you can see over here. So this means no extra bank switching, none at all. But then you're gonna just change that for a three, which is a C ROM mapper. If I come under here on the map, under list of mappers, here is three C ROM mappers. That's what we want. More character memory. And here I have the U ROM, which is more program memory. And it, those were the first ones. And I'm gonna go over some of the uh, some things to keep in mind with them. So let's go back to the code over here. 
So that's what they did. So this INS mapper was a zero. And I switch this to a three. Three equals zero mapper. So we like to open the overlay ones. Let's say on background over here, Sam. Let's go over to the top. So this is an interim wrapper right over here. No bank swapping available. So that's the first thing we do. We just switch that. So we have that switch. And then you're gonna change the our character size over here. So that increase the uh, in your realm from one to two. So now we have two eight banks. Let's go over the code over here. So we go back to program realm. So it has one. So it has one eight kilobyte characters of data. Here we set two. So now I have sixteen. Two times eight is sixteen. So I have sixteen kil uh, kilobytes of data. And uh, we need to create an extra bank. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And that's done at the end of the. So first bank will be our program RAMs that we have over here. So we have. Let me go back over here at least. So here is bank zero, beginning of our program RAM, which is comes first. And remember that NASM uses eight kilobytes. So here's one. So the first eight kilobytes. And bank one is the second. So now it is 16 kilobytes for our, for our program ROM. And from here on out is our uh, character uh, data part. So see, here's eight kilobytes, and here's the other eight kilobytes. So here's bank two and bank three. So you're increasing zero one is for the two banks for the program data. And two and three are the program banks for our character data. So related right over here. So that's pretty much the character data over here. And bank switching code. All right, and let me just zoom in a little bit. But that's the main, uh, that's how easy it is to do. So all we're doing is loading a value over here one. Here you have a subroutine. Let's store that value into this uh, address over here. So if I put any store value, so here is the bank, so I want to bank one. I'm going to start anywhere between on this ROM size over here. This is where the ROM start over here, anywhere. So from A100, let's say to A000, C000, anywhere, as long as I put here a value, bank one, to start this here. And it does the bank switching automatically. So the mapper is going to handle all the other stuff. So I don't have to worry about it. And that's how easy it is to do a bank switching. So just load the bank that I want to switch to. So here it is, put new bank using to register A. Here it's subroutine. Doesn't matter. All we're doing is just storing that into this range of address right over here. That's how easy it is. And <clears throat> excuse me. And the same thing is applied to the uh, UROM. So here it is. And if you go over here under programming on the UROM, there's all the code. It's pretty much identical. You just store the value over there. However, uh, since there's gonna, even though it's that easy, you have to do a workaround because there's bus conflict over here. So let me show you. Uh, how that works actually. So bank switching is pretty easy. Uh, all we do is load the value and start that into any range over here from zero to FFF and then you switch your character bank. And by the way, it's the same thing for your program ROM. For UROM, which does the programming banking, you just start within this range value and does the bank switching. However, that might work fine if you run an emulator, but whenever you go into the real hardware over here, as it implies over here, so you when using the NES with our power pack or our EverDrive, which is the ones that I use, uh, it becomes an issue because bus conflicts is gonna well, bus conflicts is gonna happen. And that's because for basic mappers over here, such as such as our CN ROM that we're doing over here, or our U R. Let me go into the list. So CN ROM or or U ROM over here. Since they're basic mappers, one of the first ones to actually uh, arrive. 
uh, the program ROM, which is the place that we're storing over here, like store over here, so 800. Doesn't care if it receives or read a command, a write command. You're always going to put the, uh, the data into the data bus. And the, the issue arrives if the CPU is also trying to put data into the data bus. So, so here I have a quick diagram over here. So the issue is going to arrive that the CPU is going to put data over here and the ROM is going to put data over here. So as you see, both of them is trying to put data over here. So if this has the value, I don't know, one, and this has the value zero, uh, there, one of them is going to win. So the CPU might win, like it implies here in the text, or the ROM might win, so get the wrong value. So right here is so the illustration between bus conflict. So one of them has to win. But to avoid the issue, all we have to do is pretty much make sure that both of them are storing the same value. So if this is zero and this is zero, it's fine. We don't care who wins as long as we get the, the value zero in the data bus. So let me go back over here. And to do that, it's pretty easy. We're gonna pretty much have a list of banks over here. Here's bank values, table of bank numbers, that's main and value. And it's the same thing as before. So you do a bank a subroutine over here, bank switch. But instead of just store over here, sorry, 100, if you're going to transfer uh, our bank that we want to X, and then you're going to store that into our bank values. It's right over here. And if it's, then it does an index store over here. So if it's zero, this is zero. If it's one, this is one. If it's two, it's two. If it's three, it's three. So as you see, bo both the program row, and the CPU is storing the, which is zero over here, the same value into the data bus. And let me sh just show here under the code. The same thing as before, the bank that we want, the index value, bank values is right under here, but bank values is stored within our code over here. So because we begin our uh, program code under C000. Let me go down over here, C000. So this is within this range from C000 before E000. And if you come over here, C is way bigger than 8000 hex. So we're within this range over here. So we're storing the value. So the mapper is going to see that. We're storing the value into within this range. And it's going to perform the bank switch that we loaded. So that's pretty much it. Still simple enough. And let me just go quickly over the URM because it's doing the same thing, exact same thing. So here is our headers that we have to change, but luckily you're using the NASM. So are we doing in your case over here? If you were to use the URM, you go here on my list. URM is number two. So I'm not going to go over all the thing, but here it will be instead of three, this will be a two. And here it'll be at least two since you're going more wrong. So that's what we'll be doing. So we could define instead of using your headers, do all these dot bytes at the beginning of the of the of our file over here, but having the I the NASM headers is way easier to deal with. And here as you see is the same with that code. So here's the bank of tables. Pretty much I had the same thing. Bank values is a bank of tables. Here's the UN ROM, just need the first row over here. If you have the U ROM, you need the whole range over here. And then here it has the segment zero page, pretty much is the beginning RAM. So we're reserving one byte over here to start the current bank that we are. So in this example, they just decided to store that into our RAM. You could do the same thing with the character ROM, it's up to you. And then you have here the segment code, which is the main code over here. So it's bank switch. So it's going to load the current bank. So like one, two, and three, or four over here, whatever, up to six hex. And then you do the bank switch. Bank switch, no save. So load A with the bank value. So one of this over here. So this is going to be a ROM example. So one of this, let's say is three. So this is three, 
go over to tree, it's the same thing, then store the adjective dank value over here. So both of them are the same value, then store, and the exact same thing happening over here. And to do our bank switch, just do the bank that we want, and bank switch y. So it'll come right over here. Uh, if switch banks and handle it, make sure the sound engine uh, a little bit. If it's within the NMI handler, such as sound engine, do not write your current bank, instead use the NMI handler over here. So keep that in mind. And that's pretty much how we do it. So if I were to run the code over here, if your character bank over here, let me see if it's the same. Okay. So let's uh, look what he does over here. So compile code. Well, I know what he does, but let's just demonstrate how this demo, uh, demo works. Uh, we compile, let's run the emulator. So here's Mario. And, and if you go over the code, Where the input is, if I press select over here, we load bank zero and do a bank switch. And if you press start, you're switching to bank one. So, so here's my select button and then my start button. So as you see, even if I were to open my PPU viewer, so you see the character banks over here switching on fly. So here it says bank zero. See here, bank zero. So they left that up for us. There's a bank one. So let me close this. And here I have just added a little bit more over here. So here we only had on this demo only had two banks of eight kilobytes. Here I went all the way to four. And pretty much like before, I just added more banks over here. So bank two which is the default is the worldwide chart that we showed you before in the last video bank three is the mario one bank four is the Mega Man. i i just just copied the Mega Man uh, characters at least one part in bank five the last one is mario so if i were to compile this code and it's pretty much the same thing as the code i just added uh here's player one here is player two over here that I changed. So this A and B. If I run a code, compile code, and then run emulator. So I'll open the PPU character viewer. So here is the Mega Man because right here. Oh, I'll open both of them. Press, well, it's moving over here. If I press start, here is one. Select is the other one, it's the first bank zero. I press uh, A, press B. So, as you've seen over here, I'm switching between all of this uh, four bank switches over here. And it's pretty much how you do our bank switching. At least in this example, I'm showing you the character bank switching, but you can, it's almost identical to the same if you do the UU ROM programming bank switching uh, and that's pretty much gonna cover it for this video in the next video I'm gonna go over uh, MMC1 which is the most used event more the first advanced mapper handled by Nintendo a lot of games use it so you're gonna go over that and uh, with that said thanks for watching if you like the videos uh, please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys then bye guys